Imagine selling over 50 homes a year and your only marketing strategy is Instagram. What would need to be your mindset in order to overcome your fears? What would need to be in your heart to make it to where it was truly authentic and attracted people to you? And what parts of Instagram do you need to be utilizing in order to get the most amount of reach right now? Today's guest covers all three of those topics. You're going to love it. Welcome back to the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. We're going to talk today about Instagram Reels, right? That's like the TikTok version of Instagram. Is it worth your time? Should you even go there? Is it a good idea? Is it bad for the brand? Today, we're going to talk about that from someone who's built an amazing business in a few short years, almost entirely from social media. You're going to absolutely love this episode. Before we go there, before I introduce this individual, I want to remind you about the Think Bigger Real Estate group on Facebook. There we take the best segments of all of these shows and we put them in this group so you can digest them in just a few minutes and apply them into your business. Our goal is impact and that group's all about impacting you. Today's guest, his name is Steve Panati. He's out of the Dallas-Fort Worth market and uh, he's doing some amazing things. Um, we're we're going to have him tell his story here in just a second, uh, but I just want to start off by saying, Steve, thank you for coming on to the Think Bigger Real Estate Show this morning. Hey man, huge honor. I'm so excited about this. And uh, man, I, I actually really, well, I actually shouldn't say it surprisingly actually, but I really love your podcast. Love what you're doing. You are seriously empowering so many people to be able to really blow up their businesses right now. So thank you for what you do. It, 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 it's actually, you know, much needed right now, especially. So thank you so much for your heart and for pouring into so many business owners in the real estate space. It's my pleasure, man. That's, those are some very kind words. I appreciate that. Um, it's, um, I'll tell you what, it's, it's a passion project. It really is, right? Um, people don't pay me to podcast, uh, but they pay me through comments like that, right? It really is um, something that, that uh, um, allows me to impact in the way I want to impact. So um, you saying that is music to my ears. Steve, let's get into this. It was the end of 2014. We were just getting into the real estate business. And you didn't go the traditional route of like, I'm going to do a ton of open houses. I'm going to do door knocking, cold calling, a lot of that stuff um, that a lot of people say to get started, you just got to get in and grind and do some of this stuff. You took a different approach, didn't you? Correct. So, so, uh, so it was, it was uh, towards the end of that year, 2014. And to be honest with you, one of the reasons why I actually didn't go, you know, what most people consider the traditional route is this. Number one, I actually stutter. Okay, so I have a speech, uh, 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 a speech uh, impediment. So the fluency you would hear uh, here, here on this podcast is because I've been working with, uh, with a speech the therapist for over 14 years now. Uh, 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 and so, so back in high school, it was, I mean, honestly, really hard on me because people actually knew me as the shy guy, quiet guy, when the reality is, is that I wasn't shy and I hated being quiet, but I had such a horrible stutter. It was really, really bad. And so, uh, you know, I honestly thought that I would never be able to have what people would consider a normal job you know so in college in college one of my professors actually reached out and said hey Steve you know on the side I'm a speech the therapist and so on and so I told her hey honestly that's expensive stuff I honestly you know have no money um here in college you know uh, on 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 grants and so on and so uh she says hey don't worry let me help you out. And so that started a 14 year plus relationship. And honestly, she changed my life uh, when it comes to, you know, my speech and overall who I am, you know, it was literally that bad. I couldn't finish a sentence in under five solid minutes. So what, what you see now is a bunch of hard work, a, like, like, uh, 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 honestly, as, as a, college student, you know, laying in bed in tears, thinking that, you know, I, 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 like, it just sucked not being able to talk. And then thirdly, you know, this incredible uh, lady that honestly sat with me twice a week for an hour each time and just walked me through the most incredible 
journey of my life. So Steve, uh, hold on real quick. I got to interrupt you here. That was deeply inspiring and it's going to, uh, I had a, a, a really difficult time as a child as well with a stuttering problem. Um, I was able to get through it for the most part, but I totally um, empathize with you because I know what it's like, man, to be wanting to say something and the words don't come out. Like, yeah, it, for sure. like hearing you say that and hearing, looking at the person, the professional that you are, knowing what you've overcome, I'm deeply inspired, man. I am deeply inspired. In fact, it was interesting when I was in, I think it was probably kindergarten, they pulled me out of class and said, you know, like we've got some you know, speech problems here. And they taught me a, uh, a method called turtle talk. And they said that people that have stuttering problems, uh, our minds are going so fast and our tongue can't quite keep up. And so they taught me this concept of talking like a turtle. And to this day, I still have to remind myself at times, like slow down. Not all the words need to come out at once. <laughs> and, um, so in it, an, another interesting, um, interesting story, I served a two-year mission for my church in Brazil. And wow. I had come through this stuttering problem. And as I was learning the Portuguese language, I went, through the exact, I went through it all over again. It was as if, as I was gaining familiarity with the language, yeah. uh, again, I, I, had to, I had to go through it all again. And it was, it was, um, it was as you know, it's, it's humbling, right? And it's, it's yeah, You know, it's, 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 uh, uh, um, it's, it's something this, you know, I always view it like this, you know, because I actually, I actually still too, until right now, I've served hundreds of families, literally. I've had the chance of like, honestly, building an amazing business, you know. Now as a broker, I have many agents under me and so on. And it's crazy, I still am so nervous every single time my phone rings that I have to implement so many years of practice and, uh, 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 and, fluency and so on every single time I'm on the phone. So it's, it's, you know, it's something where this, I believe the biggest battle wasn't in the practical sense. And then now I have some things, you know, under my belt that I can use for fluency, but the biggest battle was the healing I had inside and in my mind that if I would have stayed there, I honestly would have drowned uh, in my own fears, never willing to be able to, you know, in so many ways, punch fear in the face, be able to overcome obstacles. It's not perfect, but you keep fighting every single day. And it's amazing what happens when you show up every day, not perfect, but you keep showing up the amazing things that happen in your life. I, I didn't expect this episode to go this way. I didn't know this about you, Steve. I would have never guessed watching you on social media that you struggled with this. And I want everybody who's listening here today, each and every one of us have excuses as to why we're not maybe showing up in the way that we could, right? Now, m like my challenges now are different than Steve's now, and they're different from yours now. And they're di like, we all face di difficulty. The reality is, are we going to let those things own us are we going to say, no, no, I refuse to let that keep me in some small place in the world. I'm going to think bigger. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to pull in help from wherever I can find it. And I'm going to expect the people around me to have a little grace with me while I work through this. And I'm going to live a bigger life. I'm going to impact people in bigger ways. Like, see, like you have no idea how inspired I am by you becoming the social media darling that you have um, amidst this challenge, right? I mean, it's just phenomenal. Yeah. It's yeah, so, so inspiring. So, 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 so like, okay, so here I am, a new agent. And if I'm honest with you, I was, I was going back as to why I, I, I wasn't in the, in the uh, tra, traditional route, you know, like open houses and phone calls and, you know, flyers and so on. Well, number one, I still had that, you know, my gosh, I am brand new, and so I don't know much, number one. Number two, if people know that I'm new, and on top of that, I also stutter, I think people won't really see who I really am and, like, value me as a new agent. And then lastly, this, you know, old ways of marketing are, like, super expensive. I was brand new. Uh, uh, I had quit my job 
and I was literally living off of money. I have, uh, 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 I had s uh, 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 saved up knowing that I was going to need some money while I went all in on real estate. So the next easiest thing was this, you know, I remember watching Vaynerchuk that year, possibly in like May and so on. And then that year was when Facebook was excited about being able to compete versus YouTube with video. And so Facebook was really highlighting video that year. And so I remember he said, if you are in any small business, this is the year you go all in on video. So I thought in my head, well, I can edit myself if I stutter. And then secondly, it's free marketing. Everyone's already on social media. The moment they wake up and the last minutes they're in bed, everyone's on social media. I can do this. And so literally my first video was on my phone. The audio was, you know, like, I mean, super echoey and so on, but that literally changed my business. So, uh, 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 uh so as a, as a new agent, fear of being you and my speech, I just went all in on free social media and it was awesome. You know, the hustle and the courage. I like to tell people that uh, there's a couple ways to get the business that you want. Um, one is to pay for it, right? You can go out and buy leads, you can buy um, ads and, and, and presence. And the other way is just flat out hustle. And I said, with well, social media, it, the organic way, of course, um, it's all about the hustle. And I say, you still pay, but you just pay with courage. You pay with the courage. To I push love that. Little so good. Like you push with the, like the courage to push the little record button and put yourself out to the world. And I would say if there's anybody out there that's like, you know what? I don't really like how I, how I, how I look, how I sound. Look at what Steve's overcome, man, to become uh, such a powerful influence. You can imagine the moments before he did that. He, he, you could have had all kinds of stuff in your head, Steve, saying like, okay, there's a lot of ways I can get business. That's not one of them, right? I'm not putting my face out in public. Like what if I can't get a particular word out and I've got to try and work my way around it, right? Which is exactly what happens. Even for me to this day, for some reason, M words, I'll get to an M word and I'm like, that doesn't work. And so my mind is quickly trying to, okay, that road is blocked. So true. How do I get around it? How do I describe what I'm trying to say? Cause that word's not coming out. I got to take a detour over here and come back around it, right? And like all of that in front of a camera, like, it's just, it's so inspiring. Like, there should be nobody out there. If you're looking for ways to get business and you're saying, I don't have the money, I don't have the whatever, um, it's, not about the, it's not about all that other stuff. It's about the courage of you saying, you know what? I'm going to put myself out there. And over time, I'm going to get better and better and better. And I'm here to serve people, right? I'm not here to be a, a celebrity. Like, so I'm good. Not, you know? So good. Anyway. You know, it is on that note right there, okay? Serving people. Now, now look at this. I had no idea how to edit. I didn't know any of that. I remember, okay, look at this. I remember in August of that year, okay, in August of that year, I was about to be full-time, fully licensed and so on, you know. I spent, okay, the whole month on YouTube watching makeup girls do YouTube videos like it was the most <laughs> awkward thing like if anybody went and like you know searched my history they would have probably thought I'm like some like weird dude you know but like honestly I was actually watching these videos because I wanted to learn how they did video how they actually made it what made people stay watching and so on and so you know that whole month I watched videos. I learned how to edit. I learned, you know, all, you know, I, 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 I spent literally, I promise you, I spent countless hours doing things with the average agent probably thought I was wasting my time, you know? And so once I was fully licensed and so on, I just went all in on, on the hours I had spent investing, learning how to do video. And so, and so look at this, from that perspective, okay, we're here to serve people, okay? We're here to serve people and so many agents still, still don't want to put in the efforts, the time and so on, okay? To improve 
on a tool that they know, number one, is to serve people. I find it actually counter, like, like culture. That's the mindset is, oh, well, I will waste my time if I, if I spend, spend, my time becoming better at social media because here's what it is. If you actually want to serve people, you want to be the best at serving them. So you investing to become better is actually you putting the client first, knowing that that client wants the best of the best. And so you putting in time to become better at serving people when it comes to social media, that actually shows a lot about you putting a client first. I'll tell you what, there's no doubt, like Gary Vaynerchuk says, is that the ABCBS and NBC of today is Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And to be able to have with hustle, be able to have prime time real estate in front of people's eyes and then in their brains, it's, it's pretty difficult to pass up. And I want to share with you, the guest that I had on earlier this week, he's been the top broker in Oregon for the past 10 years, does not like social media. And he said, I, it's a necessary evil. I have to do it, but I don't like it. I don't like people who do it. And, and, we, and we, I kind of drilled down on that a little bit. And his big concern was that when people do it for self-serving purposes, and what yeah. you just said there, Steve, I think is a key distinction about, about these platforms is that if this is a way for you to elevate yourself and build a statue of yourself to the whole world, then I don't think it's going to work very well. And I, I don't think it's very, very healthy for your life actually, right. Uh, or your business. But if you're doing it genuinely to serve people, right. To absolutely serve people. And I think it's probably the most, the fastest way for you to get from zero to hero, right? Because yeah, you can no, really mind share very quickly. 100%. You know, everything rises and falls on, on you, you having the perspective of serving people. And so what you just said right now, you nailed it. Look at this. Your social media isn't for you. Hmm. Like it's about you, but it's not for you. Yeah. Okay. You have to understand that. Okay. Now, if you are doing it for you, okay, that's when you are going to be building a business around you, not your client. Man. So, so it is very important. You understand that your social medias are about you, but they're not for you. It is, it is honestly the number one thing. For example, okay, look at this. Okay. Everybody talks about you know, about, oh, you know, right now, what's big is YouTube. You know, every agent has to be on YouTube and YouTube and YouTube and YouTube and so on. And so what I am noticing is this, everyone is talking about growing your subscribership. Okay. And so the way I have used YouTube, it's a library of content. That's my clients and or anybody I meet has access to. So I'm not worried about someone in England necessarily subscribing, you know, in order to watch me, even though that might happen. But my focus is who I'm serving here right now, yeah. all around me and so on. And so we put so much mental energy into, I have to grow, you know, you know, I have to be noticed. It's about me and so on. You end up neglecting the fact that it's actually you being able to build something for your clients. Mm -hmm. And so, so many people get overwhelmed with me and end up not doing anything. Depth, not breadth, right? Like the breadth will come if you focus on the depth, if you focus on impact, if impact is your goal and moving every individual, every one person that you're dealing with at that moment, serving them at the highest level, you'll end up having more people that want to come join you. You'll be having more people that want to come be served by you, right? But you're right. This whole approach of like, I want to get my subscriber count up so I look like legit. Um, I think you're missing the boat. Um, I want to, you know, one thing I promised the audience, Steve, is that we're going to talk about Instagram reels, right? I've seen you do some, some fantastic things on, on, on Instagram reels. 
that has made you so human. I think oftentimes real estate agents, the, the things that they do is also real estate based. And the reality is most people, most of the time are not interested in buying or selling a house. Um, however, if you learn to get mind share of, of through entertainment and telling the story of real estate on a consistent ongoing basis, then, then you're going to be in a different spot where people are always going to be interested in you, right? They're always going to be interested in what you're talking about with real estate because the way you're telling the story of real estate is highly entertaining. And I'm going to share, I'm going to invite people to go follow Steve on Instagram, right? Now he, again, he's not looking for all these extra followers. He'll take them, right? But like the reality is you need to learn what he's doing because um, he's very authentic. He's very real. He's very funny. He's very entertaining. In fact, one of my favorites um, was, and, and I can totally relate to this because I'm a dad as well. Right. And um, I come out here in my office and I do my work all day and I'm working hard and I feel like I'm a hero. Cause I come in and I'm like, I unloaded the dishwasher, sweetheart. Hey, by the way, and I'm announcing it to everybody. I walk the dog. I clean up the poop of the yard. Like I'm just like so proud of this. Right. And my wife looks at me and she's been homeschooling. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but six kids all day long. And she's like, really? <laughs> like you need to announce every good thing that you do. Um, guess what? Let me tell you what my day is in. But she, she just kind of rolls her eyes and you did this, <laughs> this Instagram reel. You guys got to go find it. Like he positions himself as a hero for washing bottles. And then he sits on the couch and says, Oh honey, can you get me that? And the, the look on his wife's face is just, I'm like, cause I've seen that look before where it's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> it was so awesome. And it, it like that kind of stuff, you guys, the reason why I share that is it people are like, how do I use reels in, in, in Instagram? Do I have to do some funky dance? No, it's just simply putting short stories in entertaining musical format. And I don't know if you have some other way to put this, but um, I really loved the way that you did that. And it made me remember that story, right? Cause it, it was so relatable to me. So anyway, any thoughts on Instagram reels? How no, you, yes. Like, what do you, like, what coaching would you have everybody here? That's like, I feel like that's the next big thing, but I don't even know where to start. And I'm kind of one of those guys. So please teach me. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So I think the, 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 the whole premise of it is, you know, really what, 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 what I think in so many ways, social media is all about, you know, people want to know who you are and what you do like honestly people either follow you you know for who you are whether you're a brother or a sister etc 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 someone they know or what you do you know and so one of the things i always keep in mind and 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 it is something i've learned when it comes to to social media and it's the three e's i call them Okay. Number one is educate, you know, so in some way, shape or form, you educate your audience from what you do, you know, in my space or in our space here, it's real estate, you know, number two, you, you have to entertain in some way, shape or form. Now entertain doesn't mean you have to be an actor. You have to be f funny and so on. But I think that part is when you just show who you are. You know, and so it could be very simple. For example, okay, a lot of people know me that every single morning my stories is about, yeah, uh, 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 um, is about making my coffee, and so like, like, you know, it's at a point now. It's been literally three years, I think. Every single morning, you know, people know I'm gonna make my coffee, and it's you know, it is dumb but it entertains you know what i'm saying <laughs> people see me just like making my coffee and so on you know so that doesn't mean you have to be an actor and so on you know on there it just means give them who you are and then the last c is execute it's just continually showing up and so uh, 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 uh so it is very important you don't swamp your audience with only what you do you know it's just Real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate. Unless that truly is gonna be your whole like, 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 uh, 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 like you know, being and so on. But the average real estate agent needs to have, you know, the full spectrum of it. You know, it's who you are and what you do. So, 
uh, 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 uh. So I think it is very important that you show like your regular self as well. Going back, had that reel that, that I did, everything was, was filming on the phone, literally uh, 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 like in six minutes or so, you know? It was just fast. I just had the idea because I had washed bottles and it hit me. <laughs> kind of like, you know, that morning my wife had done, I mean, a million things. And if I'm honest with you, the only thing I had done that morning was the bottles. And I was really, really kind of like, man, I just watched the bottles. And then it hit me kind of like, man, but, but she's done a million other things, you know? So I know that this, look at this. If I'm thinking that the average male dad is thinking that like a hundred percent, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make it a story because every dad out there is going to relate a hundred percent. I thought, you know, is that, Hey, I'm the King. I wash bottles, you know? And so, so, uh, 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 so it is one of those things where you show them who you are. I remember, okay. Check this out. I remember someone actually said, Hey Steve, do you think, you know, you like being like, you know, uh, super funny, like at the coffee shop, order your coffee and so on, you think people might think you're not like, you know, super, uh, 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 super, uh, uh, super, uh, professional. Prof uh, prof professional and so on, you know? And then my thought was, you know what, honestly, I don't care. <laughs> you know, I think that, look at this, I think people that I would want to work with will vibe with me Anyway, and then possibly people that, you know, don't want to roll that way. Well, then, oh, well, is it, is it leaving business there? You know, I don't see it like that. It is more kind of like I am going to be happy being who I am. And then this is who I am, you know? So it's, so it is very important. I believe that you show people who you are. Nothing is more awkward. Okay. Nothing is more awkward than when you, you see a person and then you're like, dude, on Instagram, you look way different. You know, you're like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like, you know, you know, that is obviously just, you know, looking at them, what they look like and so on, you know, one, one filter, way too many. Okay. But on a practical sense, it's the exact same way as who we are. You don't want to meet someone off of social media. It's kind of like, dude, you're like, not the same person and so on, kind of there and so on. So honestly, one of the biggest compliments I get is this, Steve, you are the same everywhere. You know, you're the same at home, on social media, when we're seeing houses, like it's so much fun, like, oh my gosh, you are the same person. And I believe that is what attracts people. I believe that is what attracts business. If you want to, you know, grow your business on Instagram, become you. Nothing is, is going to be more awkward or on Facebook, YouTube, whatever it is. Nothing is going to be more awkward than someone seeing you on social and then in person, you're just like the complete opposite. So it's very, very important. You get comfortable in being who you are. So how I am like this and, you know, on this podcasts and so on and like how I am in real life honestly this is how I am I'm loud I like you know talk talk with my hands I'm always pumped up excited positive you know I'm always thinking bigger like this podcast is trying to ingrain in agents hearts to <laughs> think bigger about everything be the same on social and in real life so I believe real is right now it's amazing. Number one is this, okay? If you do a reel right now, since it's the latest thing they have going on, it's gonna get seen by everyone right now. So, so that's already a plus, you know? Number two, they're so easy to make. Remember, practice it, okay? It's not gonna come automatically. So I practiced literally for a whole week. I was like, dude, this, you know, these, 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 uh, uh, these reels are hard to do. I said, you know, 
So I practiced for a whole week. Do you know why I practiced? I invested because I want to serve on the other side as best as possible. I want to let people on the other side know, hey, you were worth so much. I invested into practicing something to make sure my product on the other side of this was well served. So practicing and so on. So number one, everyone's going to see it. It's what IG is highlighting right now. It's going to go all the way up on the algorithms. It's the first thing I had in mind. I have to do reels because that is going to shoot me right back up on the algorithm. Number two, they're not easy, but they're easy at the same time once you practice them. And three, be you. So, you know, Real is about houses and real is at the house, walking your dog, doing whatever and so on. But it's be you, it's, it's showing who you are and what you do. That should always be in your mind. So good, man. So good. Educate, um, entertain. What's the last E? See, there's three E's. Yeah. Educate, entertain execute which i believe is the biggest one okay so everybody has ideas okay you already know when a real estate agent says working on something big that big is never coming so i tell people never announce anything you know why you ain't gonna show up it's human behavior okay so better yet just show up and do it and do it again and do it again and you doing it is gonna be the announcement you know execute showing up you have to show up it is incredible look at this okay you might think that video on social media and social media just in general is getting saturated okay that's not fact that's not the truth. The reality is, is that most the average agent still fears being on Facebook, being on Instagram, being on YouTube. I promise you so many agents are still not executing on these things. And so you might feel just because every single week, you know, that the lending companies and and you know that that just because every week there's a class on it and so on okay i promise you okay look at this i don't care how much it's being preached right now it's still such a massive space that the average agent is not on i would Number also two, add sorry if to they are on you know if they are on, I can promise you this. It's either they are doing it probably not the best way and or secondly, they're so inconsistent. Yeah. So it is wide open right now. If you are a real estate agent and you are listening right now, I promise you this. Going into next year, it's going to be bigger and bigger. And I'm telling you, it's not saturated. Listen to me. It's not saturated there's so much room right now for you to truly stand out you know i think one thing that agency to keep in mind as well is that you probably have a lot of friends on facebook and instagram that are real estate agents and the reality is you're looking at that saying everybody's doing it like you're in your friend groups in your friend circles they don't have a lot of their friends as agents like they might have a couple, like there might be a couple overlap, but it's not this, this idea that um, like they don't have the same friends groups. They don't follow the same people as you do. So when you see like, oh my goodness, everybody in real estate's doing this. No, you're pulling samples from people all over the country. Your friend group, friend groups are, are very 100%. specific to a real estate niche. Whereas the That's common so consumer, true. the people that you're following, their friend, like their friends lists don't look like your friends list. So it's not saturated like you're saying. And, and to think that, the pandemic, right, of 2020 has moved like the world to online, right? People are, stuff that used to be offline is now online and people are trusting what they see online more than ever before because there's just less offline stuff out there, right? There's just left, like less homes to go see and view in person. Um, you know, there, there's less um, face-to-face one-on-one meetings happening. There's less networking events happening. If you're not 
again, you must be present to win. And guess what? You better be present here, right? Maybe this worked in years past, but you better be present now because the world's moving in a very quick direction towards the digital. And if you don't apply what Steve just said, right, of being, of educating, of entertaining and of executing, you're going to miss out. Whereas if you apply those things, right, if you apply and actually get in and do whatever the Instagram um, or social media at the time, like whatever they're favoring, do that. I think that's what you said, Steve. And it's, it's a powerful concept because you're right. Instagram has their own agenda and it's right now it's to beat TikTok, right? It's to take TikTok's yeah. followers. TikTok's, 100%. Like TikTok's against the ropes a little bit because the government's coming at them, right? And so Instagram's looking to capitalize and they're going all in on saying, let's get all those TikTok users over here to Instagram. Anybody that does like an Instagram reel, we're going to give you priority. It's pulling all that creative um, juices from TikTok, trying to pull it over to Instagram. So guess what? Take advantage of that and get in and, and learn it, right? And I'm thinking for myself, right? Today isn't going to be a how to, how to do it. You can figure it out, right? It's not difficult to go in and push the reels button and, and do what it asks you to do. Or, you know, worst case scenario, you go like click on a YouTube link and like get some tips on the technical side of it. The biggest thing that I hope you take away from this is number one, if Steve, who has a, a severe speech impediment can overcome what he's overcome to be, have his face and voice on video, then nobody has any like excuses. Like it's like you're phenomenally inspiring, Steve. And number two is you just got to like put it into action. Not everybody else is doing these things like you think they are. And just because everybody knows about it doesn't mean everybody's doing it, right? And I love that you said that. Um, Steve, I want to I end with this, this, which is the signature question of the show. Um, you're a big thinker. You're a bigger thinker than I even had imagined before. I, I admired you because of the way you show up in the world. I even admire you so much more now because of what you've overcome to become that person. But I want to ask you this question. What does Steve Panati do to continue to be a big thinker, to continue to expand your possibilities? What does that look like? Man, that is a, a uh, really heavy question, you know? So, 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 so I think, look at this. I think ultimately it really comes down to this, okay? I'm all about living life with a purpose, personally being fulfilled, you know? And, uh, 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 uh. and so, you know, we all know that money doesn't make you fulfilled. It really doesn't, okay? I know it doesn't, okay? Check this out. I remember I put, when, 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 when I started real estate, I said, you know what? I, I am going to make it a goal, okay, to have 100K in my bank account, cash. That was so far from me. I thought that was going to bring me happiness, okay? So I made it a goal and so on. I'm a, you know what? I am going to hunger for this. I'm going to go after it and so on. And so, you know, sooner rather than later, like I hit that. Do you know what happened? I actually didn't even realize I had hit it. And when I saw it, like, you know, I mean, you know, for me personally, coming from a single mom, okay, my mom only went up to the eighth grade like in school and so on, you know? And so, so, so if I'm honest with you, I never saw money. I like, you know, went to college thinking, I'm gonna get a good job. And all of a sudden I'm making, you know, 50K a year. We all know what that feels like. It's like, oh my gosh, college wasn't like, you know, it, you know? And so, so, so I remember, you know, hitting a hundred K in the account. And I thought, you know what? Nothing in me shifted. Nothing changed. Nothing, literally. It was so dumb. I was like, what a stupid goal. I thought at first. I'm all like, this is, that was dumb. And then I remember, okay, I remember this. Not that in itself it's dumb, but I, I literally said 100K happiness. But then I realized that, you know what? My gosh, I have found being able to serve people, families that were in tears at the thought that, oh my gosh, I'm a homeowner now, okay? Remembering when 
my mom purchased her first house, wiped out her savings. She said, hey, we have a house now. And it's those moments that honestly made me hunger. I'm like, you know what? I have to serve more people because more people need to experience this. More people need to feel like they were served well, regardless of the income. 800K for a house or 150K for a house. People are people. People have emotions. People work super hard for their money. You know, we as agents make a lot of money and we work really hard for our money. People working, you know, as a, as a, you know, uh, AC tech probably don't make as a lot of money, but they work really hard for their money. And so I began, look at this. One of the ways I began to think bigger was, was being fulfilled in knowing that my purpose was to help other people find theirs, find their dreams, make it happen. And it's one of the reasons why I put so much heart and uh, 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 and uh, 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 heart and and uh, 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 and passion into everything I do. You know why? There's someone on the other side of everything I do that is waiting to encounter the opportunity of making their dreams happen. And so, and so I see it like this. If I, if, if I am showing up half-hearted, it's so unfair to the person on the other side that is there with their whole heart. So I can't do that. And so everything I do, the videos and meeting with clients and now as a real estate broker, you know, meeting with agents and having the opportunity to help them see it bigger, think bigger. You can build a business, you can make more money, you can serve more people. And so I think, I think that, you know, finding my thinking bigger has been knowing that everything I'm doing, it's not about me. And, and being able to serve on the other side of everything I do it is all about me. It's a paradigm shift, a shift in perspective. Let me tell you, real estate agent, if you're watching this, what you do matters. What you do is so important. And everything you do on the other side, even if it's helping out 12 families this year, you just literally revolutionized, changed their whole lives with everything you did. What you do matters. And having that perspective, I'm telling you, brings in more families, brings in more business, brings in more clients. And all of a sudden, what you thought what was important is actually not important at all. It's nice having it. I'm not saying it's not nice having it. Like, it's really cool making a lot of money, but I will say this at the end of the day, being fulfilled inside is, is what is going to allow you to think bigger, to dream bigger, have more vision in your business. I'm telling you what you do matters. And here it is. Think bigger because on the other side of your cell phone, of the internet, of your social medias, our families waiting for you to show up. Steve, this has been fire, my friend. Um, it truly is inspiring to hear um, not just not just see what you do, but now hear the why behind it. And there's no it's there's no uh, question as to why so many people follow you and uh, and love you and want you to serve them with their real estate needs. Powerful stuff. I think all of us can take a lesson from this that it's not about us, and the more that it's about other people, the people that we serve, um, the more uh, we're going to be fulfilled and the more uh, powerful we're going to show up in the marketplace. Steve, it's been such a pleasure. I want to um, remind everybody. Um, that you'll be able to find these episodes in, in, on your favorite podcast platform, um, as well as here on Facebook. I also want to say um, these final three words, which Steve has helped us to do, and they are go think bigger. Thank you, my friend. Been such a pleasure. What an honor to be here, Justin. Thanks so much. You bet.